Hi, I'm Tash. Welcome to Tash's Library. Today's video is the Unpopular Opinions book tag. The first prompt is a popular book or series that you didn't like. Now, I have to go with the discovery of witches. And I apologize to all of those who love this series. And I know a lot of people do like it, but I DNF'd it. I could not finish the first book for two reasons. Now, first of all, to give a bit of background, this book is about an Oxford University professor who is a witch, although she hasn't really found her witchy powers yet. And she comes across this book that then imperils her. And this becomes a life-threatening situation that triggers a whole sequence of events where she needs to solve this particular problem and escape this particular threat. And in doing so, she meets this vampire who sets out to help her. All this is good. I, I don't mind vampires. They're not my favorites, but I like it. I love that academic sort of setting. And don't get me wrong, I have no issue with reading books that don't fit in with my worldview. So, for example, I will happily read a book that portrays a sexist perspective, even though that is something I don't personally agree with. And the reason I will read these books is because that's life. And sometimes it's really helpful and interesting to read a different perspective. And ultimately, we're reading about characters who have very different perspectives, uh, world, world views, very different upbringings, very different backgrounds and life experiences and whatnot. And so they're going to have a different way of looking at things. And that's okay. You don't need to agree with them. You don't need to be in their shoes the whole time. They can be flawed. And that is okay. But with the discovery of witches, I found that the character was internally inconsistent. So she's this, you know, supposedly highly intelligent, highly successful woman who then overnight becomes this scaredy cat damsel in distress that suddenly heads over heels over this man that she literally just met. And she just does everything he says about question. That didn't fit in with the type of person she's portrayed to be. That is one reason I hate it. The second reason is because the relationship is just toxic and I can understand that toxic relationships happen and sometimes they're quite interesting to explore in books, but she's an intelligent woman who would not have leapt into the, the relationship that she leapt into and she makes incredibly poor decisions. And this book made me so angry. I was yelling at it. I was actually yelling at the book and ended up throwing it in the bin. And, and I apologize immensely to all those people who love this because maybe it's me, maybe it's me, and maybe I just didn't give it long enough. Perhaps it all, it redeems itself. Perhaps from what I've heard, she does actually come to her power and she may become the glorious feminist heroine that she supposedly is at the beginning. I don't know. So do let me know, but yes, I did not like this book. The second prompt, is a popular book or series that everyone else seems to hate, but you love. Now this was difficult because I think it's, it's really hard to find a book that everyone hates. So one book that I find a lot of people don't quite understand and don't really enjoy, uh, and it has quite low reviews, quite mixed reviews, and that is Foundation by Isaac Asimov. And I think one of the key criticisms for this book is the lack of characterization. You don't really get to know anything about the characters. You don't really have any female characters. You don't have characters that really carry on who you, you don't know anything personal about them. 
and people find that difficult. However, I this book is not about characters. It's not about individuals. This book is about the big ideas. It's the big cycles of society, the evolution of society. It explores big ideas like religion and science and the role of technology and determinism, free will. And gosh, it includes some super clever political machinations. And I could not put this book down. It was just incredible. I so enjoyed it, even though I, I can't even name one of the characters, but the idea is I still think about this book and I yet have to read the sequels and I'm dying to read the sequels, they're on my TBR, but I just, yeah, I have to disagree with those people who dislike this book because of its lack of characterization because it's not that kind of book. Having said that, I also understand some people are character readers and if you love following characters and you love falling in love with particular characters, then this book is just not for you. Prompt number three is a love triangle where the main character ended up with the person you did not want them to end up with. This one's tricky for me because I don't like romance in my books. I don't really enjoy romance at all. Um, I find that even fantasy sci-fi books that have too much romance really annoy me. They really annoy me. And it's okay to be in the background. I, I quite like it when someone, you know, finds a relationship and, and that becomes sort of part of who they are. But if it becomes this whole, oh, does he like me? Does he not like me? Or does she like me? Or, or do you think we'll end up together? Or maybe, oh, she likes her, and but he likes me and, and all this sort of stuff. I don't know. I just don't like it. I, it, it annoys me and I can't keep going. And so there's actually very few books that I've read that engage with these ideas. And so if I'm really pressed to choose one, I'd have to go with a book I didn't even like in the first place. And that's Twilight. And the reason for that is I actually think she made a very poor decision in picking Edward. And uh, Spoilers, but I think everyone knows that. It happens in pretty early on. And even though, I mean, Jacob is so flawed too. However, at the very least, he's alive, right? Pick, pick the guy at the heartbeat. So that, that, that's my very unpopular opinion. Number four is a popular book genre that you hardly reach for. For me, I've got two there that I very seldom reach for. One of them is romance. As I mentioned before, I don't really like romance. It's too tacky, but more than that, it's too pining. It's, it's that whole, ooh, I'm so in love. And it's like, oh, I just can't handle it. I just can't handle it. And I just don't find it interesting. And I apologize to all those people who love romance. I know, um, I'm sure it'd be lovely to, to kind of get caught up in those stories. But I, I don't know. I just like the big ideas. And having said that, I, I, I have enjoyed a few romances, but they need to little be a little bit quirky. They need to have quite a lot of humor to them. They, they need to have more than just the love story. Another genre that I pretty much will never touch, never touch, um, is historical fiction. And I think that's just because it's just too close to home. I read for escapism. And it's not that I can't read heavy books, because I will read horror, I will read uh, grimdark fantasy, I will read pretty heavy-hitting sci-fi books and enjoy them. But historical fiction is just too close to our real world. And I'm too sensitive because I know these things actually happen to people. And because it's grounded in actual reality, I just can't cope. And, and I think about it all through the night and I can't sleep. And then I get sad. And you know what? I just don't like it. I don't find it cool. And... Yeah, and I think that says more about me than the actual genre. I think it just, I'm, a, I, I'm, yeah, I'm just a weakling. And number five is a popular or beloved character that you do not like. Well, this is a very unpopular opinion. I apologize in advance. 
and I know a lot of people would be very angry at me for this one, but I really don't like Vin in Mistborn. And I, I know I enjoy her character arc. I enjoy the role she plays in the book. I love the series, absolutely love it. But Vin to me is a bit of a whingy Mary Sue. She is just enmeshed in just, it's teenage angst. It's, oh, no one likes me. And it just, and she just whinges about everything that has to happen. And, and I just, I find her quite annoying. And, and then she's just inexplicably amazing at everything. And, and that's not a trope I particularly like anyway. And the two in combination just make her insufferable to me. And having said that, she does redeem herself as the series goes on. But she's not my favourite character in that series. And I pretty much like every other character way above her. I know. Very, very, very unpopular. And having said that, I love, I love the series. I do love the series, so don't get me wrong. She's just not my favourite character in those books. Number six is going to be another unpopular opinion. It's a popular author that you can't seem to get into. And for me, that has to be Stephen King. I have read a lot of Stephen King. I, I went through a whole phase of trying to read him about oh, even like 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. And, and I quite liked Pet Cemetery, and I liked The Shining. I tried so many others, and even recently, you know, I, I liked Fairy Tale, but I didn't love it. And there's something about his books that make me feel really tired, really drained. It's, 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 I don't like how I feel when I read them and when I finished reading them. And I think that's more to do with me, maybe, because Stephen King's writing is beautiful. It's, it's so easy to read. It's engaging. His stories can be a bit samey, but I mean, they're, they're entertaining, right? And, and I think it, it does come down to that feeling I have when I read them. And yeah, I don't know. I still want to try The Dark Tower. And, but I think that's going to be my last attempt at Stephen King. Because I just, I don't know. I just don't get into it. And I kind of want to because he's, he's pretty cool. And I love his nonfiction. Number seven is a popular book trope that you're tired of seeing. Uh, for me, this has to be The Chosen One. I'm sick of The Chosen One. I really, really am. And especially when they sort of present it as Mary Sue's. It's, it's that, and for those who don't know what a Mary Sue is, it's, it's those people who are just good at everything. So they, they've never picked up a sword in their lives, but the second they find out that the chosen one, they get handed a sword and they're like the best sword fighter in the kingdom, that sort of thing. And they just can't step wrong. And I don't, I don't really like that. Um, the chosen one is, can be great when it's subverted. So where you have a chosen one and then it turns out that that's actually not the chosen one or they, the actually, the understanding of what they chosen for is a little bit different from the expectations. And so that can be interesting, but ultimately it's not a, it's, it's not a, trope I love. And another trope I just have to mention that I really don't like is enemies to lovers. Uh, once again, I don't really like romance, but enemies to lovers to me is just so toxic because how can you absolutely hate someone, hate what they stand for, hate who they are, hate what they do, and then be madly in love with them? That to me is just the makings of the most toxic relationship on the planet. And I just can't get into it. I can't buy that you've suddenly seen the nice side of someone or that they've redeemed themselves that much. How can you forget what they've done to you in the past? So yeah, so that's, that's something I have issues with as well. Number eight is a popular series that you have no interest in reading. And this is highly unpopular too. For me, it would have to be Robin Hobbs' The Realm of the Elderling particular the Farsia trilogy, but pretty much all of them. And it's not because I don't believe Robin Hobb is an amazing writer. I have actually not tried Robin Hobb. 
And the reason I haven't is because I'm a total, total weakling when it comes to dealing with too much emotion. I can deal with violence, I can deal with all that, but this, I don't want to cry when I read a book. I really don't. And from, from all the reviews I've read and everything I know about Robin Hobb, you really get put through the emotional ringer. And I don't think that's for me. I don't think I can handle it. My heart can't handle it. And so I'm just going to kind of steer away from that. Final prompt is the saying goes, the book is always better than the movie. But what movie or TV show adaptation do you prefer to the book? This is hard because I pretty much like the book, the book over pretty much every adaptation. One of my favorite adaptations of all time is The Lord of the Rings. And I still prefer the books. <laughs> so, and having said that, I've watched the trilogy, the extended edition trilogy so many times, I've lost count. I still prefer the books. So I've had to really think about it. And for me, it would have to probably be The Witcher. Now I do like the books, I haven't finished them all. And I really like them. And even though I think that's probably another book series that has mixed reviews, but the TV show was amazing. And maybe that's unpopular because I know some people haven't really liked it, but I really enjoyed it. Henry Cavill to me is Geralt of Rivia. Um, the, the cast is amazing. And the way that the series brings that world to life, is incredible and I really felt it, really enjoyed it, completely binge watched it. And so I'd ha that has to be my favorite adaptation where I'd probably prefer the adaptation marginally to the books. That's it for my unpopular opinions. Some of them more unpopular than others. Thank you for watching. Please put in the comments uh, well, what your unpopular opinions are. I'd be really interested to find out. And please subscribe if you like. And thank you for watching and may the books be with you.